This episode is brought to you by our affiliate Gemini. Gemini is a well-respected cryptocurrency exchange started by Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss. If you're interested in purchasing Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other altcoins, please check out their website at gemini.sjv.io backslash moon tower to learn all about it. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of the Moon Tower Business Podcast. This is your host, Joseph O'Bell. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to uh, Dan Montevaro. Uh, Dan, welcome to the program. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, Dan, Dan's an artist. Uh, he, he's currently in LA. He's, uh, he's done work uh, kind of all over the place, but maybe we can get started by uh, you introducing yourself to listeners and just talk a little bit about your background, kind of how you got started uh, in the art world. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I originally I grew up in the South Bronx. And um, when I, South Bronx, when I grew up, it was all, we're talking, and I'm dating myself here, but we're talking, you know, late 80s South Bronx. It was all abandoned buildings. It, it looked, it was pretty bad. But, um, you know, I stayed home all the time, stayed with my grandparents, and I used to draw. That My family was a loud Puerto Rican family. So I... I was never a big talker, so I would find if I drew, if I would do drawings, people would notice, like, oh, what's he doing? You know, so it became kind of my my language from back then. And then my cousin used to run with Crash and Devo, those guys in the 80s doing graffiti, and, you know, I started getting influenced by art, and all those guys pushed me to go to art school to, you know, do the the proper fine arts route. So... You know, that's that's the route I ended up taking. And as time has gone on, I've gotten back into, you know, over the years, I've gotten into um, doing public work because, um, you know, walking around and seeing graffiti and seeing those those huge pieces that that kind of influenced me into doing to doing art. That was kind of, you know, an inspiration for me. So that was a little bit of me doing public work was me kind of wanting to you know hopefully that might inspire somebody else to kind of get into seeing art as you know an outlet or creative resource there um yeah and i just kind of kept going that way and you know a couple of museum shows a couple of museum acquisitions blah 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 um i knock on wood very lucky very lucky to do what i what i like you know that's awesome. And so like when, when you were younger, you were doing uh, drawing, what, what kind of stuff did, was uh, in, interesting to you? What kind of stuff were you drawing when you were at a young age? Oh, it was, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> I was doing, uh, I, I, you know, my uncle used to do model cars, so I would draw model cars. I would draw whatever, whatever was around. And really, you know, when, when you're that young and you're kind of, you're stuck at home, it's kind of drawing whatever's around you, you know? And um, so it was a lot of cars or, you know, sometimes it was superheroes or, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, at that, that level of experience, like, you don't, you don't really know. The, and, and even now as an artist, like the biggest problem is knowing what, what to paint, what to draw, what to create, you know, the content is really, it's really the value. Um, so, you know, back then it was, and, and it was more to kind of get that communication going, you know, sure. get that communication between what I see in my head and how that translates into your hand and, you know, working with materials so that, that, you know, and, and I think for any young artist, that's kind of the proving ground. It's, you know, learning how to manipulate, your your physical you know the physical things you're working with with what you have mentally up here and how to get from what's here out there and it's it's a it's a it's a form of communication in a different way but you know it's something you you exercise sure you talked about uh graffiti in in new york uh in the bronx uh you know how, how do you think that's kind of influenced your your style of art and what did uh, graffiti and kind of street art look like in in uh, in New York and the Bronx versus uh, what you see in LA today? 
Oh yeah, totally different. I, I it's the intention is different. I mean, back then in the eighties, you know, all that time there was really no funding for arts in schools. It was very minimal. Um, you know, to have a career doing art was kind of like it, it wasn't even. You know, the the right now we have the internet. We have so much information we can learn about different sources of revenue. This is different sources of how to make how to make a living doing these things. Back then, there was no, there was no how to, you know, and it was all word of mouth. And, you know, so a lot of these pieces were, it became these, um, these kind of signposts of like, you know, this is me creating art. And this is also my name. I'm here. I'm, I exist, that kind of thing. Um, I, I think the biggest change in that is the monetization of it right now, where people can go in, instead of this being um, purely a form of expression, it's become a little bit more of how can I make money at this, you know, and how and the, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that in terms of any kind of creative endeavor, that shouldn't be your sole focus. Like you still have to have that business aspect to it, but the drive to create shouldn't be just how much money am I going to make at this? Because the amount of work and time that goes into doing something creative, like there are way better ways to make a lot more money. Um, you know, the amount of time I spend on concepts and art and, you know, paintings that never see the light of day and, you know, all these things, there are way better ways to make a lot more money in a shorter span of time. But this is what I genuinely enjoy having this kind of conversation visually. So for me, you know, it, it can balance out. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest difference is this, I, the intention of it, where back then the intention was different. Now the intention is, is obviously more, fame and monetary base and all that kind of stuff um and then even back then i saw in the 80s there was a big a big jump in terms of um there was a big jump in terms of um museums in in europe or galleries in europe picking up graffiti artists mm -hmm. and all these guys were getting flown to europe they were it was all moving really fast and literally in maybe six months it all stopped you know what I mean? Yep. And that that hurt a lot of these guys because they weren't they weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting that. They didn't know how um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. Uh, uh, they didn't know how that. Uh, how to navigate a changing landscape, you know, and a changing landscape in terms of. Um, in terms of. Um, you know, the business changing. Sure. The business changing, the business moving, um, you know, it was it was harder for them because then once again, once again, you don't have um, you don't have uh, a guy. You don't have anything telling you this is how it's done. This time. You know, gotcha. Gotcha. Can you uh, talk a little bit about the different uh, type of uh, the style and type of art you do? I know you do, you know, some uh, oil painting, I believe, and then. I know you do, you work on murals. Uh, you, you you commission murals uh, uh, from time to time. What uh, can you just talk about the kind of the, the different stuff you've done over your career? Yeah, um, it, it's you know at the end of the day, the um, where the where the artwork like the intention of it is still a big thing for me. Where the artwork lives, where it goes. So um, you know in terms of my my canvas work then the gallery stuff and the stuff like i i got pieces going up um for an exhibition at the tokyo metropolitan museum next month um those pieces the narrative in those pieces are a lot more involved because you're you're in if you're in a gallery you're in a museum you're in the space where you can have this conversation with the artwork and you know it can be you can take as long as you want. You can take as long as you want. You can revisit it. It's it's a lot more of an intimate setting where in terms of public work, you don't have that so much. 
So for my public pieces, I try to make it more about a visual, kind of this visual communication of line and color and shape. And it's this fast moving um, artwork. And, um, you know, and also with public works, I try, I try to make it purely about shape, color, line, form. I try and keep um, people out of it, um, references. I try and keep it at a minimal because I feel like when it comes to public works, on a, on a purely visual level, color and shape is a language everybody understands. So you don't have to worry about context. You don't have to worry about language, nothing else. Everybody, everybody can understand and appreciate color, line, shape, and have that experience with it. So it becomes a shared experience, and it bypasses a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different boundaries in terms of communication. But uh, when it comes to my canvas works, I can get, I can get a little more deep, a little more personal. Yeah. You have, you have some very interesting pieces. Uh, I, I showed you a piece that I have, uh, one of your prints that I really enjoy. Um, you've, you've done uh, like, uh, I've seen uh, several pieces that have like comic book imagery and stuff like that. Uh, where do you get your inspiration for, for the different uh, pieces that you do? Um, you know, it, it, most of the work start off, it starts off as, as a concept and a series and it kind of gradually moves that way. With the pop stuff, what and I, I found that a lot of my work is based on juxtaposing different narratives. And it took me a couple of series to kind of get really literal with the recent works. But even with that pop stuff, I was combining these war comic books from the 50s with these romance comic books from the 50s. And when you would mash them together, the narrative would would change in a weird way where you'd have like, you know, some kind of quote about a battlefield and then a couple holding hands and it, it changes everything. Everything gets very, in a, in an interesting way, I thought. And, um, you know, and that the kind of the inspiration was, why should it, why should I do it? Why should it exist? Cause it could look cool. Um, but I thought that, Looking cool was great, but it needs a reason to exist. It, it should say something. It should have some kind of some kind of narrative to go along with it. Where it's not it, you know. At one time, and it it stayed with me. Um, this was back in college. I I done a piece, and I I I, I got into arguments with professors, cursing back and forth. Um, and I had one professor and he was like, well, you know, it, it's cool, but it's decoration. And I was like, that fucking, that really bothered me. That really stayed with me. It really got to me. So then it became this idea about my work where, of course, I wanted to look visually appealing, but it shouldn't just be decoration. It should be something else to it where you can have a conversation. You can talk about the piece. You can look at it. It can you can have a conversation with someone else about the piece. So it becomes this more, it becomes more of a living thing than just a visual, a visual, you know, uh, decoration or wallpaper or whatever, whatever term you want to, you want to use to, to kind of demean the work. Um, so yeah, it, it's, you know, the, the reason for it existing was always a thing. So every time I do a piece, I want it to, there has to be a reason for me doing it. I don't want to do it just because it's cool, just because it's, and, you know, those are all parts that come in, but then there has to be, you know, uh, has to say something. And it doesn't always have to be political. It doesn't always have to be, you know, negative, but there should be some kind of conversation going on. There should be something. Absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. I, I saw recently you posted something on social media uh, you had a piece that that deals kind of with the the war in Ukraine. Is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I I I did a piece, and I usually don't. I, I do very few prints. I do very few print runs. Um, I'm you know I'm very selective about the work I put out. 
but um you know i thought that i would do i would do these digital files and i would just they're free and i put them on my website it's free to download you can you know my only requirement was that they're not for resale but you can download it you can take the file to a print shop and have a poster made you can put on a t-shirt i don't care it's free for everyone the only thing i asked was that people would take a moment to look at links to donate and that's it um so the copyright on it was the only copyright i was i'm keeping an eye on is any nfts going up anybody trying to make money on it because sure. it's not about for me it wasn't about anyone making money on it it was you know, you donate, you can enjoy this piece of work. It's yours. Keep it. Do do whatever you want with it, you know. And, you know, as an artist, I, I saw other artists and they were doing, oh, I'm doing an NFT run and, you know, I'm going to donate a portion. And I I didn't, if I'm donating, I'm, do, you know, this is, this is work. If you want to donate, donate. If you don't, then don't. But it's, you know, I put it out there for everyone and, you know, because it, it wasn't about me. It was about hopefully, like I said, with with my work, if it inspires somebody, that's great. So with this, if it inspires someone to help, then great. Then, you know, I, I've done at least something. So where, where can folks that are listening find the links to uh, to donate uh, for, for causes related to that piece that you made recently? Um, I on uh, on my website I have um, I have a page called uh, Ukraine and I have a bunch of different places to donate. Whether it's um, there's even uh, places for rescue animals. People had to leave their animals. There's places for you know everything. I I I, I have a bunch of um, a bunch of Ukrainian friends out here in LA, and um, I made sure to do my due diligence in terms of proper places where the money would go to where it should go. Um, so, you know, I have a whole list there and people can take the list, share the list with other people, you know, whatever, however they, they choose to want to participate in that, you know? That sounds good. I ha- I'm going to post a, a link to your website in the show notes so folks can check that out and, and uh, take a look at your pieces and also look at the different ways they can uh, donate to, to that particular cause. Um, you have worked in uh, several different cities of, around the world uh, throughout your career. Can you talk about some of those experiences and which ones really stood out to you and, and, and kind of how that, what that experience was like for you? Um, yeah, I, uh, I love traveling <laughs> any, any chance I get. I love it. Um, I, I did, um, I love Korea. I did, um, I did a show at, um, this, uh, the Ensidong Art Institute. I was one of the one of the first uh, American artists to show there, and um, Korea is fantastic. Loved as a city, loved it, loved it. Um, that was a great experience. Um, always love Italy. Um, yeah, I, everywhere I've been, I kind of it's it's a different place, different experience. The artwork is always different, people always different, and it's. For me, it's enjoying the differences that each place has. In those differences, you kind of find similarities. Um, like in um, in Korea, I sat outside uh, a framer and I watched how they would stretch canvases. And I sat there with uh, with a cup of coffee and I probably like a couple of hours and I just watched them watched them stretch canvases, and it was it was relaxing for me. It was like it, it, it was great. I love that was that was really fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, you know, I was supposed to do um, a project in Rome, and um, you know, World War Three started, so you know that <laughs> that got kind of that got kind of stopped for or postponed for a little while. Um, but uh, yeah, and then even the the Tokyo Museum, I was going to go, but the way things are right now and you know i didn't have enough time to be a process figured out and then i have to do a project in dc so i unfortunately i can't go to the exhibition at the tokyo met and that's i'm bummed out about it but 
you know, I've always said my artwork, the artwork lives better lives than I do. You know, like I, I'm pretty, you know, I, I wish I could say my, my life was interesting. Got dogs, chill at home. Like, you know, my artwork gets to see places I don't get to see and gets to experience things I don't get to experience. And, you know, I feel like if I'm, if I'm doing, uh, if I'm doing the right thing, then that's the way it should be. You know, my old work is going to live past me. It's going to be the superstar. I don't, you know, just cog in the wheel. Speaking of travel, you're uh, planning to come to Austin, Texas for South by Southwest uh, this week, I believe. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about your, I think you're speaking on a panel. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm uh, speaking on a panel about NFTs and the metaverse and how that kind of um, plays into art plays into fine art and um yeah, i'm excited for it number one i'm excited because you know i i want to want to check out austin i've been to san antonio i've been to dallas austin i haven't been so uh, i'm excited to come check out austin and um you gave me some great food recommendations so i'm all about that um but uh and i'm excited for the panel because you know nfts it's confusing it, it it can i i've been kind of watching the crypto space since 2015 and i've been quiet about watching it because you know a lot of people oh you know you got to get in eh, it's you know it's interesting because it's new technology something new um and i i liken it to you know i grew up buying cassettes and then buying dvds and then cds and dvds so you know to see it change into mp3s was i i've seen that whole process so to see money go from cash to card to digital it, it's an interesting so for me it was watching the evolution of, of things um i i think right now we're still at at the beginning stages a little bit where it's um people are putting a lot of emphasis on digital and not as much on the art portion because they don't know how that translates. Um, or maybe it's a hard transition, a hard jump and transition into it. But I think in terms of copyright protection, in terms of um, IP protection, all that stuff, um, having a, a record on blockchain of where the artwork originated, of watching the provenance of that work is going to be really important. And... Um, and I think it's it's going to be ultimately beneficial for the art and for the collector. As a collector, you want to know where that artwork has lived. If it, if, uh, if it came from the artists themselves, if it came from like where, where the, if that artwork is actually from that particular studio, all those things. Um, so I think in that NFTs can be a massive help in terms of, fraud and all these other things and and even in terms of you know there are artists that copy other artists work to know like this work was created on this this day it's already you know it's already time stamped and date stamped and everything you know for another artist to come in and do something do the same thing it protects that original artist because like i said the content is where the value is like the idea of coming up with things like putting paint on canvas or putting paint on a wall, it, it's, it's doesn't take that long, but figuring out what you're going to put, like right now I have a blank canvas on my wall. Um, that's, you know, to most artists, that's the most intimidating part of, of creating work because it's, there's no rule. You can do whatever you want. So when you have this wide, this wide breadth of of doing whatever you want, then it becomes it becomes intimidating. Because what am I going to put up there? And what if I put up there it doesn't work? And and all these things start coming into play. Um, you know, so the the concept of what you're going to do is the most the most important thing than actually what it is you do. If that that can that makes Absolutely. And, and NFTs are, are a fairly new concept. Um, you know, you, you touched on this pretty well, but do, do you think the, 
the future of the art world is going to be connected to the NFT market? I think I, I, you know, to, to be honest, I think the future of a lot is going to be connected to that. We have deeds to homes, titles to cars, uh, marriage certificates, all these things. When you have a record on the blockchain of it, um, you can't steal it. You can't forge it. You can't, you know, so I think it's going to, you know, it's going to open up into, into a bigger, a bigger space in terms of that. In terms of art, I think for sure. I think for even physical paintings, we have um, you have an NFT of the record of when it was produced, where it was produced, like the provenance of it. Um, so from digital work to real to real work to physical work, um, I, I think it's going to play. It's going to play a part um, now in terms of the quick and flip value of it, mm, you know, that could change. It could, I mean, every market, everything changes. So we're looking at a new technology, a new thing, and, you know, it's trying to get a handle on how that's going to evolve, where it's going to evolve into. And I mean, I when I started learning about doing art, it was back then it was you had to do sl- a slide sheet and present that slide sheet to a gallery, but you couldn't just walk into a gallery. It, it, there was a whole process. You had to either be invited in or you had to approach the gallery in a certain way. So fast forward to now where you can just send a JPEG and you can just have, so, you know, that's changed. Um, so I've seen the, uh, everything, everything has, has evolved into this, this kind of digital space. So, I can I can see there being more of a, more of a, a space for that. Gotcha. Um, you use the name. I, I may, uh, correct me if I mispronounce. Is it uh, Moncho nineteen twenty nine? Yeah. Uh, can you just talk about the, the origin of that? How how that came about? That was uh, Moncho is my grandfather's nickname. He was born in nineteen twenty nine, but um, you know I I had I he, he was he was my father figure. He was my father. Uh, my father left me, you know, and yeah, going into a little bit of personal. My father left me when I was a baby. It was a whole blah, blah, blah. Um, met him when I was 20, and it wasn't, it wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't enjoyable. Um, but my grandfather's my father figure, but I have my father's name. So um, I was getting success with, my, with the name that I share with my father. And I, you know, I, I st- my work started to evolve. I started to change, and I was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be known. I, I don't want him to have a tie to this, to what it is that I'm building, what it is that I'm doing, because he had no no business in the first place. He had no, he didn't cultivate it. So um, in the public works, I started using my grandfather's name, and it was a way to kind of keep him around with me when I was. He passed away. But it was a way to keep him there with, me, you know, and um, that kept evolving to the point where now there's a piece in the Fig Museum and it's, you know, it's Dan Savaro Moncho 1929. So, you know, it for me, it was it was good to see this, um, you know, this old Puerto Rican guy who worked with his hands his whole life. And, you know, now his name's in a museum now, you know his names in, you know, different exhibitions and around the world. And that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I gave back a little bit, you know. That's a great tribute to your grandfather. That's awesome. You did that. You have, um, you have exhibitions uh, uh, that have taken place all over the world. Uh, you've had uh, murals commissioned by Universal Pictures uh, for a movie, been featured in uh, HBO, um, a show before. Uh, I saw that uh, the LA Clippers have uh, some of your art. You have some art hanging on on, uh, on the wall at the uh, French consulate. Uh, can you talk just a little bit some, about some of that stuff and how how you got involved, kind of kind of in the film industry and uh, you know tied to your art? Um, it, you know, it's kind of I you know, and knock on wood, I do that a lot. But um, a lot of it sometimes is just luck. Sometimes it's um, it's just staying true to what you do. 
staying true to the work that you produce. Um, you know, these, these opportunities have kind of, they found me. Um, and, and I'm very appreciative and lucky for all of it. Um, but I think part of that for anyone who's creative, if you truly put the work in and believe in what you're doing and believe in, in the essence of what it is as, and, and I, I touched on this before about, you know, it, just having money being the driving force if the the reason for the creation is the driving force so you truly believe in what you're saying and what you're doing and you that passion is in the work other people are going to see it and other people are going to understand what it is on on a visceral visual level they're going to understand there's a lot of passion there's a lot of there's more to that than just you know a product for sale um yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these opportunities came up. A lot of these um, companies reached out, and you know, for the most part, it's it's great because they understand I'm not, you know, you're you're bringing me into it. I'm an artist. I'm going to bring, you know, I'm going to be respectful to to what it is that you do, like with Porsche. I'm respectful respectful to the brand of Porsche and everything involved, but you're not bringing me in to just to draw a car or not to paint a car you're bringing me in for how i perceive it in my in my own way you're bringing my artwork into the conversation um and for the most part it's it's always it's always super it's always super easy going it's super it's a really good partnership um usually back and forth um google was great google was we love what you do just do your artwork we love it um you know and yeah it's always you know knock on wood i'll do that again it's always an enjoyable experience because there's a respect back and forth like i respect the brand that i'm working with they respect the fact that this is my career because once i'm done with this like i still have a career to to keep cultivating and it only benefits that brand if my career continues to move ahead because then that becomes a touchstone for them. It, you know, it's a beneficial back and forth relationship. That makes sense. Um, are there any uh, artists that are very important to you that kind of make the, made an impact on, on uh, your career? Um, I mean, you know, they, there's one, and I don't know his name. Don't know his name. I wish I did. Uh, when I was about, I want to say 12 years old, eh, about 11 or 12. There was a gifted program at Lima College in, in New York for the summer for kids in art. Um, and it, basically it was summer camp for people that couldn't afford summer camp. <laughs> and, um, you know, if your kid was artsy, you know, it was, you know, you could, you could do that. So, um, so I did it um, for that summer and there was an exhibition there. And they brought us into this room and um, the room was dark and there were these big amorphic shapes. And, you know, as a kid, I didn't get what it was. I was like, I don't know what this is. And they explained that, you know, this is the, the whole, the whole show, the whole room is about, um, it's a Japanese morning, like someone passing. by, And all of a sudden everything clicked. I got it. I looked around and I was like, Oh, this, it makes sense you know and it it was it was a very like for me it was a powerful experience because i'm looking at the work and all of a sudden i understood why the person was, what's going on like everything about it made sense to me and you know that artist i i wish i knew his name but and i i would thank him to this day cuz that was a big influence on why the importance I want, I try and place on the work that I do because I know how, how important that impact was to me. So if my work can have an impact on somebody, it's to me it would be an honor because that guy has had real estate in my brain for 40 years. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't think there's anything that anyone could say that has impacted the course of their life just from 10 minutes. 
That's big. You know, so yeah. So for me, you know, and that's what I mean about you know, if you work and inspire someone else, if you work and push someone else, if anything like that, it makes a change. It, it you know, like sometimes people don't understand the a word, a conversation, something can really influence the path of someone else's life. And, you know, sometimes people think, I'm sure the person who was telling us about the show for her, it was a throwaway comment. It was just blah, 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 and moving on. But I don't think she understood how important that was to a young artist, you know? Sure. And, you know, I think there there is a lot of those missed opportunities and missed moments that we, we don't pay attention to in life. But, you know, we we impact other people around us a lot more than we think we do. Yep. Absolutely. For listeners that are uh, interested in, in checking out your art and, and buying a piece, what's the best way for them to, uh, to find uh, your art online or, or in person? Um, I, for right now it's online because I'm, I'm very, I, I'm limit. I, I limit my, um, my exhibition. I, I, and, it's not so much by it's well, it's kind of by choice, <laughs> but um, I'm, you know, when when I when I have an exhibition, when I have a show, like, yeah, sometimes I get in my own head too much, and I wanted to say something or mean something or you know a little bit like that. Um, it's not always like that, but you know, uh, but to that extent, um, then with the pandemic, it's kind of slowed down a lot. Um, so right now I, apart from, I think I'm doing, I'm, I think I'm, I'm doing super fine in DC next month too. But apart from that, I really don't have anything too much in the books for this year. Everything is kind of studio commission stuff. Um, and then the Japanese museum, blah, blah, blah. I, online would be the best way. Um, and that would be the best way for me to keep people updated because things change. I sometimes I'll decide I want to do a show, you know, in a month, you know, and usually when I show pieces, I'll show the pieces in a show and I take them and I hoard them away. Um, I don't, I try not to oversaturate with my work, um, you know, because I, I think they're great pieces. So you get a chance to see them, see them. If you don't, that's okay, but they may be another chance. That's awesome. Um, I love your work. I think it's awesome. Uh, Dan, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and sharing a little bit about your journey, uh, a little bit about your artwork. Um, excited you're going to be in Austin to, uh, to come speak on that panel at South by Southwest. And uh, I hope you get some good food. I hope you like the city. And I uh, hope we can keep in contact and have you on the podcast again sometime. Absolutely. And, you know, more than welcome to stop by the panel and hear me uh, babble about artwork and nfts and you know and uh probably the food i just ate so yeah should be sounds fun. good awesome well thank you so much yeah thanks for having me yes sir sure. this episode is brought to you by our affiliate gemini gemini is a well-respected cryptocurrency exchange started by cameron and tyler wakelboss if you're interested in purchasing bitcoin ethereum or other altcoins Please check out their website at gemini.sjv.io backslash moontower to learn all about it. Thank you.